In this video, I present a brief and intuitive introduction to the issues of causality, identification and instrumental variables estimation. I think this problem is best illustrated using an example from empirical economic growth research, where the effect of population health on economic growth has received quite a lot of attention over the past few decades. And here it's intuitively clear that um, better population health may raise per capita GDP because healthier workers are more productive, they can work longer, they also tend to be better educated and so on and so forth, so they could produce more. At the same time, a country with a higher per capita GDP is able to invest more in healthcare, in medical innovation, uh, and also in hygienic standards and so on, which leads to better population health. In addition, individuals with a higher income tend to be better nourished. So all that implies that a country with a higher income level will also have a healthier population. And all this basically implies that we have a two-way causality running from health to income, but also from income to health. And to illustrate this, we plot here um, population health on the horizontal axis and per capita GDP or income on the vertical axis. Now let's assume that the causal effect of health on income per capita GDP is given by this curve here that has an intercept alpha 1 and a slope beta 1. So if the population is healthier, per capita GDP increases with a slope of beta 1 and there is a measurement error epsilon i. In reality, of course, these curves may be non-linear and not uh, so nicely linear as they are here. And overall, we have now a causal effect of health and economic growth. That's kind of the true relationship in the background. That's what we assume. Now, however, there is also a causal relationship of income on population health. And this is now depicted in this curve here where population health also has an intercept and um, is determined by uh, increases in income, among other variables as well, but increases in income, that's the relationship we depict here, um, according to a coefficient beta 2 of uh, this slope. And we also have measurement error here, um, u i. Empirically, the data point that we observe is given at the intersection of these two curves because that's basically the equilibrium where both equations are fulfilled and we can determine population health and per capita GDP for this particular country I. Now there may be other countries basically that share the same causal effect of health on income as in country I. But the causal effect of income on health, for example, comes with a different intercept. So, for example, this could be uh, this country here, and we would have a different intersection between this country's uh, equation that determines health in terms of uh, income and the equation that determines income in terms of health. So we get this data point here. As, as it is drawn here, for example, this country would have um, a worse disease environment such that for a given level of per capita GDP, population health is lower. Now we have a second data point that we get by this intersection. We may also have another country. In this case, it may be the opposite as in the previous country and population health may be better for each level of income. And we get another intersection between the curve that depicts the causal effect of health on income and the curve that depicts the causal effect of income on health. But then also the causal relationship of health on income may shift, for example, due to measurement errors in epsilon or due to omitted variables, such that, for example, we get um, this relationship here with three other intersections now between this dotted line and the other lines we have here. Or we get this curve here with another three intersections. Now we see that this spans a parallelogram here 
and all the observations that we will get actually will lie inside this parallelogram for different uh, countries and different situations with different measurement errors. So we have a scatter plot that looks like this here. And if we try to estimate the effect of health on per capita GDP by an ordinary least squares estimator, then the regression line that this estimator would lead us to is this one here that connects the um, lower left corner and the upper right corner of this parallelogram. But we see immediately that this regression line neither identifies the causal effect of health on income, nor the causal effect of income on health. So the problem is that in such situation, ordinary least squares estimation cannot identify any causal effects. What we would need instead is a variable that shifts only one of the two curves, but not the other. So the other should stay constant. And if we find such a variable that is uh, valid in this uh, context, then this can be used as an instrumental variable or IV. And on the next few slides, I show how this would actually work in order to identify the causal effect of health on income. So we again have here the initial situation with an intersection between the two curves that gives the data point. But now this um, equation that depicts the relationship uh, between health and income or the causal effect of uh, income on health basically depends also on a variable set that does not appear in the other equation. So such a variable could be, for example, an exogenous medical progress, such as the development of the germs theory of disease and other exogenous um, medical um, innovations that are not dependent on income. That's the important um, aspect here. So that it only shifts this curve, but not the other. So what we would then observe is, for example, um, a shift to this equation here, or a shift down to this equation here, and all of them would lead to different intersections with the equation that gives us the causal effect of health on income. Now we see already that all the data points would be aligned somewhere here along this line, so that the regression of um, of um, income on health with these data points would allow us to identify this curve here and estimate the parameter beta 1. Now, a valid instrumental variable has to fulfill two conditions. The first I've already mentioned, it must only shift one of the two curves and not the other. That's the exclusion restriction. So the variable set is excluded from the other equation that we do not want to shift. And that means um, the variable that we have is basically only correlated with the variable that we change, but not with the other variable that we do not change. So in this case that we had previously, the medical innovation affects health, but by itself it does not affect income through any other channel than through the channel of health or through channels that can be controlled for. And second, it needs to be a good predictor of the variable that it instruments. So it needs to be a good predictor of health in our case, which means that it is a strong first stage in the estimation. So it's estimated typically in, by two stage least squares, meaning that first we estimate the uh, re relation of between health and um, income and then conditional on medical innovation. And then we plug in the predicted value of health by varying um, uh, medical innovation into the other equation and estimate this equation in the second stage. And this allows us to derive consistent estimates of the causal effect of health and income, so of the beta coefficient that we are interested in here, this beta 1 coefficient, and therefore get rid of reverse causality issues, omitted variables um, that bias the results, and of the effects of non-random measurement errors of explanatory variables. So if these two conditions are fulfilled, we can, and we find such an instrument, then we can use it to get rid of the problems that I've mentioned here.